the 2023 general election will be the main conversation as we gradually approach the end of the year 2022, as political parties prepare to go full throttle into their campaigns to convince the people to vote for them come 2023. The presidential election will feature 18 candidates with four main contenders. Bolame Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, LP, and Rabiu Kwankwanso, of the new Nigeria People's Party, NMPP. All eyes will be on the Independent National Electoral Commission's readiness for the showdown in February 2023 to ensure a free and fair electoral process as Nigeria prepares to hold its seventh consecutive general election since the country returned to democracy in 1999. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubo reiterated his determination to ensure that the fast approaching 2023 general election will be the best. Yakubo expressed confidence in the Electoral Act and the genuine efforts being made by the Commission, especially in the area of technological improvement. Joining us on this show this morning as we discuss the state of Nigerian politics ahead of the 2023 election is Odia Ofeimu, a Nigerian poet and author and former secretary to late chief of Bafemi Awolowo of the Defunct Unity Party of Nigeria. Welcome to the morning show, Odia Ofemo. <laughs> bye bye, long time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good to see you. Now, you were part of the 2017 process. Let's start with that. You uh, wanted to run uh, on the platform of the Labour Party, uh, you know, as governor of uh, Edo State. Okay, but since then, a lot has happened. We have succeeded in having a new Electoral Act, Electoral Act 2022, and now we're in the thick of uh, the commencement of campaigns for the elections in uh, 2023. What's your assessment of the developments within the polity and the race for 2023? What has changed since you were actively involved in the race? at the gubernatorial level, that is. What has changed is the fact that the political parties are not like the political parties of yesteryear. You can say, for instance, that you can say, for instance, that by now, all the political parties should have had their manifestos properly on the page for all of us to view. That has not quite happened. What we are having are like extempore presentations of the way the country is and where the country needs to go. I think what the rest of us should do is to look very closely at Nigeria and figure out how we think the country is going and use that as a measure of what the political parties are actually claiming to be doing. We should, in fact, graft our own wishes upon what many of them wish. For instance, I think that there are fundamental problems in Nigeria which no government can escape, and we should begin from there. For instance, the ethnic problems. All the political parties should be joined in relation to, one, how they are dealing with the hiatus between the Fulani and the Hausa in relation to the rest of Nigeria. The Fulani and the Hausa have the same language, or they speak the same language, and largely belong to the same religion, but they don't share the same citizenship code. And this has affected their relationship to themselves and the relationship they have to every other part of Nigeria. We must find a way to ensure that all Nigerians 
are equal before the law, and that the same citizenship code applies to all of them. I say this because Nigerians like to pretend that the ethnic issue is something that can be bounced off of the, of the, of the page. No, we cannot. We are not all tribeless, and we are not all without nationalities. There is a relationship between the ethnic groups that is not healthy. The Igbo, for instance, have been marginalized to the point where it is important for every party to be judged according to how they are nationalizing all the, nation all the nationalities. How do the Igbo reckon in the accounting of all the political parties? It matters. It matters greatly. Recently, uh, Pa Debanjo was talking about the necessity to give the East, to give the East a special attention. It is not just a special attention that, that it requires. We need to ask ourselves whether we can, irrespective of how the election goes, how we are going to ensure that all Nigerians, including the Igbo, are not marginalized. At the same time, it is important for us to make sure that those ethnic fractions and groups, as in the case of Satan Kaduna, that have no states of their own, are considered within a self-governance principle that does not require them to live under the imprimatur of supposed overlords. It is important, and we cannot escape from it. At the same time, we need, we need to look at all the political parties in relation to how they are dealing with the most fundamental problem in Nigeria's social life at the moment the problem of about 20 million Nigerians being out of school children. It is a problem that can be solved within a number of years, under five years. But how are the political parties dealing with these issues? It is not enough for us to just look at education. In my view, it is possible to make education thoroughly, thoroughly free for the individuals undergoing, undergoing, the, educational, undergoing the educational process. I mean, the, ASU provided, for instance, a way of organizing taxation to cover university education. The federal government adopted it but the money has been fired in so many directions okay. that today there is no funding okay. for the university system. How we can run a country without that kind of self-respect is difficult to tell. Okay, sir. In my view, there is the very serious problem of facing development by considering just one issue, education. If you take care of education and you ensure that every child born to a Nigerian man or woman can have it, then we have a basis for preparing for a, f a future in okay, which sir. we have we have farms and factories properly taken care of. Okay in order to absorb the 20 to 20, 25 million out of school children whom we are presently unable to take care of. Okay. If we are not going to deal with such issues, it doesn't matter what the political parties talk about. We are going to be back in the lodge where we have always been. Okay. Okay. And I think that as we move from one issue to the other, okay. it is important that we realize Nigeria is a country okay. that is not only viable, but standing in a position 
to ensure that all other African countries are viable. Okay. okay. If okay. Okay, sir. Uh, we sir. take care of education, we ought to make it an issue that sir. every African country should adopt that approach. If, if you can hear Wiping me, out illiteracy from Africa if you can is hear. something that is, do, is doable. If, if you can hear me, sir. So, so let's just, uh, thank you so much for all you said. So let's just put a lot of things together. You talked about the political party, you talked about the manifesto, you talked about all of that. But I also like to ask you about something you know that has been making the rounds. This issue about a Muslim Muslim ticket, because you talked about tribal polarity by one of the leading political parties, a Muslim Muslim ticket. Anyway, they've made arguments. So take for instance one of the arguments on the card is the fact that in 2011 they filled out a Muslim Muslim ticket and there was no hula balwa. Uh, in 2011 they filled out a Muslim Muslim ticket. There was no hula balwa about it. That why now that um, it's it's okay for Nigeria that there's nothing about no really big qualms about religious polarity. But Khan too is saying that, no, we wouldn't take this. Uh, so let's, let's, let's talk about that. What's your take on this Muslim-Muslim ticket by the APC? It would not have mattered, it would not have mattered if the political parties came out with grand programs to deal with the issue of education and the issue of en uh, employment. That was why I talked about building farms and factories as the necessary component or complement to ensuring that education is available to every Nigerian child so that we will not have a problem with the kind of situation where Ministers of Education and Ministers of Labor are appointed, appointed only so that they can bully the, the educated classes. The truth is that when you don't have programs that ensure proper citizenship rights for everybody, then it, then it matters how we deal with the problem of education um, of a uh, religion if we don't deal with it simply because we don't have the right economic programs then it becomes necessary for every religious group for every religious group to insist on being accommodated within the policies and programs of any political party. And we cannot escape it. It is not escapable because religion matters. If you cannot defend people, if you cannot depend, defend people outside their, their religions, then religion becomes a means of demanding what is right. And there's no point in, 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 in saying that you are not a terrorist or you don't belong to this party or that party. Religion or lack of religion becomes important when all the other issues that you make it irrelevant are not taken care of. We are not taking care of education, we are not taking care of employment, and we are, we are not ensuring that poverty is genuinely reduced in Nigeria. People will normally ask for it. It will matter to every Nigerian that their political party recognizes the religion they observe. Because to ignore it is to land them in, in a state of forgetfulness. When you do not see other people, you cannot prepare for them. When people are invisible, you cannot make arrangements for their protection. It is important, therefore, that we don't take religion as just one of those things. It is not one of those things. We must take care of it. Okay. Audio family, let me ask you about money politics. Because I recall again that in the 2017 process, you had to withdraw from the gubernatorial race because uh, uh, you were asked to come and pay 
is a nomination form of about seven million. And you thought that uh, that was absurd, that you know, they shouldn't be asking uh, people to pay so much. But since then, in the uh, current process, we have seen people picking up nomination forms for 40 million. We have seen in another political party people paying as much as uh, 100 million for uh, a nomination form and expression of uh, interest form. The Electoral Act 2022 even says for you to be president, you, are, you can spend as much as uh, 5 billion uh, naira. But you protested in uh, 2017, 7 million to uh, 100 million, and that's quite a gap. And you were a member of the Labour Party at the time. Now the Labour Party, you know, uh, has gained uh, some momentum. Do you want to comment on that? And also comment on the four front runners that we mentioned when we started this uh, conversation, namely Tinubu, Atiku, Peter Obi, and Kwan Kwan So. Uh, in, just in case you have one of them as your candidate. Actually, I never protested because of the, <laughs> of the amount of money involved. I protested for other reasons, which we, can go, which we don't need to go into, the, into now. But it is important to always remember that most political systems ensure that elections do not become very expensive by stating very clearly how political parties should be funded and why candidates should not be made to pay more than is necessary. In the Nigerian system, to be honest, there is an issue we must face. If you have to go around a country as big as Nigeria with more than 310 million people, it costs money. And therefore, anybody who is running to be president of such a country is going to spend money. But whether people should spend as much money as they are spending at the moment, it's an, issue, it's an issue that needs to be dealt with properly. In very many democracies, anybody contesting for a big job gets a subvention from the state. In Nigeria, the subvention that we are supposed to be paid to the political parties we are really never paid. And when they were paid, it was done in such a, a manner that per voter, they got not enough to go the mile. The issue is who is going to do a computation of the process that we remove, for instance, the amount of money some of the candidates pay for private jets because that is really not, properly speaking, something that a national subvention should take care of. And we do need to ensure that what is allocated to a candidate is just enough, one, for postage stamps. These days, in the age of, in the, age of the internet, it is certainly cheaper to reach every Nigerian than it used to be. And to be honest, most political parties, when they organize their rallies, they spend so much money on bringing people to the rallies that no normal human being, depending on normal accounting processes, can fund a political party. There must be a way of measuring in a work study fashion, how much a candidate can rightfully spend without busting the banks. It is the INEC, therefore, that is at fault at the moment when so much money is being spent that should not be spent. INEC needs to redo the mathematics. We cannot afford to induce candidates 
to pay so much money to their political parties for the purpose of, of running. If we continue to do that, we are generally encouraging all Nigerians to steal, to take money from Nigerians in diaspora, which can reduce to take money from externalities that are not Nigerian. We are bound to be in trouble at the level of finance so long as we increase the amount of money it takes to be part of the process. Officially, elections have been made very expensive already. But we must not forget that we are in a country where when people enter office, they write bulletproof cars even when they don't need it. They stay in state houses even when they don't need it. They have long, queue, long uh, uh, motorcades when they don't need it. Now, these are some of the, of the things that the average vo voter is actually being asked to pay for. But there are ways of managing the affairs so that in, in front of every performance, in front of every electioneering, people have an idea about what not to do and about what is beyond the accepted valuation for the purpose of electioneering. We cannot go on like this and expect that we won't be in trouble. By the way, let us never forget it. Candidate, if a candidacy covers a whole state or covers the whole country, and the country is as big as Nigeria, it is bound to be expensive. How we make contributions to our political parties counts. There must be a way, well, the banking system is being regularized in a way that we know how much everybody earns. So that in terms of the contributions we make to our political parties, it is possible for INEC to do a calculation that you tell us what a voter can give to a political party that is relatively civilized. OK. Um, OK, I understand we need to go on break. But before then, I asked you about the transformation of your party, the Labour Party, and what you think of the uh, leading four candidates that we mentioned at the beginning of this program. What do you think of that? Who is your favorite? Who are you going to vote for? <laughs> I know you won't want to say that on TV, but what's your assessment? If I, 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 am, I am not worried about saying that on TV. Remember I said that there are certain fundamental issues we cannot escape. I talked about ensuring that between the Fulani and the Hausa, a common citizenship code exists in Nigeria because the disjunction between the two have been transferred into a Nigerian problem, and it, it, it has become a problem between the, the Fulani and the rest of us. The Igbo problem has come into it. I said Adebanjo was trying to deal with that by supporting a candidate from the east of Nigeria. That is a nice way of saying that the Nigerian family must become one family and that we should not allow a distanciation of any group in a manner that makes their participation in our common struggle less inviting. And I suppose if we are interested in this particular problem, the issue of OB running or not running would have been settled long ago, long before it became an issue. Many, polit many political leaders had agreed that the candidate, a candidate must come from the East. It is certainly one of the easiest ways 
of resolving a civil war crisis that we have all been fooling around with. No more fooling around. Let's deal with it. Let's ensure that the Nigerian family has become one family and it is no longer to be divided between the Yoruba and the Igbo, between the Igbo and Arewa and the rest of it. We do need that kind of angle. And I think that the Labour Party has literally dropped into that bracket. We now know that there is a candidate from the East who, even if he, he has come out trying not to be representative of only the East, we help Nigeria solve that problem by simply being where he is. And it is important that we don't forget it, that when we resolve that problem, most other problems can be taken care of. In Nigeria at the moment, I talked about out of school children only because it is a, it is a very serious Arewa problem. And anybody who thinks that the Yoruba and the Igbo can make Nigeria prosper without dealing with, with, with such an Arewa problem has not thought about Nigeria seriously. We do need to ensure that we put more resources into ensuring that Arewa truly becomes part of Nigeria at the level of the children who are growing up. We don't want them to become grown up and only available for banditry before we begin to worry. And I, and I believe also that a political party that has as much respect for accounting, low government, as the Labour Party candidate and his uh, 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 deputy have been going on about are very, very likely to be nearer the mark than most of that political, political parties. But more than anything is this. The pedigree of the, of the various political parties must be looked at in terms of how they flunked the past and have, properly speaking, not responded, not responded to the existing government as a government, in the same way that the APC did not take a proper look at the PDP while doing criticisms of, of the government in power. Many people are responding to, to Buhari's administration without looking at the fact that Nigeria has completely broken down at the level of debt servicing, at the level of inflation, inflation, uh, uh, monitoring, and at the level of industrial targeting, we are not industrializing and we are regressing to the past, past in a way that makes us almost 50 years behind time. And <clears throat> this has happened more than 70% in the past seven years than it did okay, in the 20 note, years preceding it. On that note, what we have must therefore take a political party that is clear-headed about ensuring that every cobble counts. Okay, audio of Femu. every vote audio of Femu. I can see the headlines already. Audio of Femu is obedient and is still loyal to the Labour Party, but you've raised very fundamental issues. We'll take this short break, and when we return, the conversation will continue. Please stay with us. Don't go away. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to the morning show. We still have Odia Femu, a Nigerian poet, author, and former secretary to Obafemilo Awolowo of the defunct Unity Party of Nigeria. Great to have you back, sir. Thanks for your insight. I mean, we are still talking about the political scene and all you know that is going on. And you've talked about the fact that you've got a strong sense of admiration for uh, Peter B and uh, the Labour Party, and you talked about balancing. Uh, you talked about an Igbo presidency, you know, being balancing and all of that. Uh, another question that comes to mind, 
now as we speak is the loss of patriotism by a political class. And I'm sure you've seen this over the years. In the time of Chief Awolowo, you still had politicians that thought so much about Nigeria. And even when they argued and they debated and they fought each other, was on ideas of how Nigeria would be better. But look at our political campaign. Abuse, vitriolics, sentiments, here and there. I mean, if you are to dial back, this was not how the campaigns were in the 79 when you went everywhere with Obafemi Aolowo. When did the rain start to beat us, sir? I'm happy you, you've put it in the manner all of us would have put it. But let us simply start from the fact that Nigeria has become a country where structures do not attempt to influence behavior. And people try to turn their own behavior into the structures of development. It cannot help political parties. It cannot help governments. And it does not help relationship between states and individuals or between individuals and their candidates. What is important is this. A lot of people who went to school attended schools where everything was almost tailor-made for whoever was seeking a certificate. You knew when you, ent when you went to school, you would be leaving on a particular date. It was orderly. People who do not live in an orderly environment cannot plan the future of their children. Your child is five years old. You ought to be able to say, oh, at the age of 12, the child will be in first year in secondary school. At the age of 18, the child will have left the university. That approach to life is no longer possible in Nigeria. And people with such inconclusive factors as determinants of their behavior are not likely to have what you regard as regular or common behavior. Much of what is happening to, to, to Nigerians and the way Nigerians behave, whether on the roads, on, during, during, during traffic lockdowns and the rest of it, is provided by the fact that government is unreliable. And unreliable governments create unreliable people. When a government allows a university to stay off work for one, for one month, that government properly ought to be asked to resign or be forced to resign. And if we cannot force them to resign, we must have a way of defending our lives because a government that allows a university to stay without functioning for one month is a destroyer of national purpose. When you create such disjunctions in almost every area of our lives, and you are expecting the citizens to act very, prop very prompt and, pro and properly, you are demanding too much of Nigerians. The question, therefore, is what should Nigerians do to make sure that governments cannot take them for a ride in the way they, they are doing at the moment? We need to organize proper political parties. The NGOs are good, but the NGOs are not political, party, political parties. There is a sense in which a citizen order enters into political party formation that can prescribe and determine what must be the output 
of, go of, of, of government behavior. Now, I, I want to say that the patriotism that was available when we talked about patriotism was one in which all the companies that were being established in the bushes of Inewi, Kano, Ijebode, and the rest of them were producing. We were living in a society that was producing. Then we entered a society where factories were closing down and turning, turning uh, wow. all, all, all their workers Indeed. into people who now go, to, who now go to, uh, to the churches to pay tithes. No, that was not the way it, will, it used to be. Tithes were paid from normal salaries, mm. not from, uh, well. you know, as man, no man, no. Right. Because we have created a society like that, frankly, it is difficult to determine what patriotism really means in a country like Nigeria. And that has affected the way Everything we all else. live. Well, on that Therefore, case. we need to demand governments. We need to demand, demand governments that have a structured way of getting things done. Well, on Political that note. parties must start by being such parties. On that note, we'd like to thank you very much, uh, Odia Alfaimu, for joining us uh, today on The Morning Show. And it's good to see you again. Thank you very much indeed.